Greetings, M Squared here. Today we are going to do a few more constructions. Today we are going to do a perpendicular bisector. And then along with that, I'm going to show you how to construct a 45 degree angle without a protractor. Normally we would use a protractor. So we're going to do a perpendicular bisector and construct a 45 degree angle. All right, here we go. Remember, only use pencils for constructions. Do not erase your construction marks that you make with your compass because that's how I'm going to tell if you're correct or not. And then always use the ruler as a straight edge and not a measuring tool. Let's get started. So I'm just going to do a couple of these. I'm going to do B and D. So those are the two that I am going to make a perpendicular bisector. So the first thing I want to do is actually construct a segment congruent to those. So I don't want to do it on this piece of paper because it's going to get too messy. So I'm going to check C out first. So I'm going to, this is day two, day two, and I'm going to do C. I'm going to do the perpendicular bisector of C. So when you do a perpendicular bisector, make sure you save room above and below the line because you are going to need it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw a line, a random line that's longer than C. Make sure it is longer than C. Then I'm going to grab my compass and I'm going to measure the distance from the end points of C that I want my, the radius of my compass. Remember, this is the center, the pointy part. This is the radius. I want the radius to be the distance from from the end point of C to the other end point of C. And then to show that I used this compass, I'm gonna mark it with an arc. So that arc is, that tells me that you marked it. I'm gonna come back to the line I drew and I'm gonna use the end point here and I'm going to measure that distance. Now that distance is C. Now I'm going to construct the perpendicular bisector of C. So the first step is that you want the radius of your compass to be a little more than half of the distance. So I'm going to shorten my radius because I don't want it to be as long as C and it was just as long as C. So I just want to make sure it's more than half and it is. If it's not more than half, you'll, you're going to have to redo it. So make sure it's more than half. Half is about right there. So then I'm going to, at each endpoint, I'm going to take the center of my compass and put it on the endpoint and I'm going to draw an arc above and below the line. So almost 180 degrees. So I'm just going to go like that. And I'm going to do the same thing at the other end point. Now what happens there is I didn't change the radius when I went from this end point to this point. That means this arc is the same distance. All along that arc is the same distance from this point, and all along the second arc is the same distance from the other end point. So where they meet is actually the same distance from both endpoints. Not only that, but if I connect the dots of those two arc intersections, I have a perpendicular bisector. Wow, amazing. So what's a perpendicular bisector? It cuts a segment into two congruent parts and is perpendicular. So that means this right here is 90 degrees. And that brings me to the second thing I was going to show you today. That's a 90 degree angle. Well, today I want to show you how to bisect that angle. So that's in another video, but I'm going to just remind you. So to bisect an angle, I'm going to draw an arc between with my center right there on the perpendicular bisector and the line. And I'm going to intersect both sides of that angle. So I'm going to set my center on the vertex right there of that 90 degree angle. And I'm going to make an arc, make an arc that intersects both of those. All right. Now I'm not, I'm going to make my, um, you need to make your radius just a little bit bigger or it won't match up. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and I'm going to, with the center, I'm going to do this twice. Once with the center where the, side the arc intersects the side of the angle and with and then one again here where the arc intersects the other side of the angle and i'm just going to make two arcs out here and where they intersect is the point that i need to make my bisector so i have my little arc there with the center here now i'm going to go over here on that one and make my arc and you can see they intersect right there well because I use that same distance, that point where they meet is the same distance from this side of the angle as it is from that side. And I am going to draw a line 
that goes from the vertex to that point right there. And all the points on this line I'm just drawing are the same distance from this side as it is from this side. That means it's a perpendicular bisector. Sorry, that means it's a bisector of the 90 degree angle. And what's half of 90? It's 45. So what I did was I made a 90 degree angle using my perpendicular bisector construction, and then I bisected one of the 90 degree angles, and that creates a 45 degree angle. So without using a protractor, I was able to create a 45 degree angle. If I wanted to bisect the 45 degree angle, I would have a 22 and a half degree angle. So you can do that without actually using a protractor, which is pretty cool. All right, um, I was just going to show you the perpendicular bisector one more time, just in case. I'm just, I'm not going to construct a side. I'm just going to randomly pick one. So I just, this is my, the length of the segment I'm going to do a perpendicular bisector. So remember, the radius is more than half of that distance. And if you don't want to draw the solid arc above, I mean, all the way around, sometimes people just do it above and below, and then it doesn't get in the way of their construction. So that is another option. So I drew the arc there and there, and then I don't have as many arcs in here and as much stuff going on. I'm going to connect those two. And another thing some people like to do is instead of drawing the whole thing, if they only want the perpendicular bisector like on the top, then they'll only do that. That's an option too. So these are both 90 degrees. And I'm going to show you that perpendicular bisector, right? No, I'm not. You already saw it once. You can rewind the video. All right. So that is how you construct a perpendicular bisector and an angle that is 45 degrees. Good luck with that. M squared signing out.